Hi, everybody. I'll wait a minute or two for people to join us on Facebook and YouTube. See who's going to be joining us here tonight. And for some more people to join us on Zoom. Let me fix my microphone here. Oh, it looks kind of empty tonight. I guess it's a nice spring night. And people are out and maybe not watching Mrs. Q. Oh, here we go. Here are some people. Hi, it's nice to see you all tonight. I'm going to wait a couple minutes. I hope everyone's had a nice week. It's been a beautiful week here in New York City. Nice and warm. Well, cold, but spring, sunny. We had some rain, but the weather cleared up very nicely today. So hoping that this is going to be nice April weather from here on out. Let's see, I have some messages here to look at. This looks good. So it looks like there's only a few of us here tonight. And um, I'll wait a couple more minutes to see who else comes in. I guess maybe my topic for tonight wasn't that interesting, the story of Karen Q and Mrs. Q and how I got to be doing this sitting here in front of you every Friday night and why I go out and do my walking tours. But hopefully some people will watch it later. Um, um, Ms. McFarland says it's not much like spring in Tennessee. It snowed, sleeted, and hailed today. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It doesn't sound good at all. It was quite nice here in New York. Chilly, but sunny and nice still. Here's some more people joining us. Um, Ms. McGann, thank you for being interested in the story. While we're waiting, of course, I will take a few minutes to promote our um, April 30th tour. If you'll check here for a second, I'll just share the ad with you. And here's the ad for our April 30th tour. Um, you should be seeing it, I hope. And uh, if you don't have your tickets already, please get your tickets to join me and Mr. Madison and my sister, Mrs. Van R. Um, for our commemoration of Inauguration Day, April 30th, the day uh, President Washington was sworn into office in the year 1789. You can get tickets at Patriot Tours NYC. There's me last year at Miss, as Mrs. Q and Kyle Jenks as uh, James Madison. And that's from a tour we did together last year. So I hope you'll join us. If you can't join in person, please think of coming on the live stream. The tour will be live streamed. And uh, so you can join us on the live stream if you would like to. And that will be really fun as well. Um, we have had a couple of changes um, since I last talked to you about the tour. And let me see. Are there some more people trying to eat it on Zoom? No, just us. Um, excuse me. Um, so because of security and construction going on in and around Federal Hall, we were not able to get permission to do um, an actual swearing in of General Washington at Federal Hall, which is very sad. But instead, my friends at Francis Tavern Museum have agreed to let us end the tour in the long room of Francis Tavern, which you might know is where General Washington gave his farewell address at the end of the Revolutionary War. A very historic and wonderful place. The museum is closed that day for a private event, but they have agreed to let us in just for our tour so that we can see the long room and the Washington Portrait Gallery. So we'll be finishing the tour there. But leading up to the tour, we have a, to the end of the tour, we have a a lot of great things in store for you along the tour route. You'll learn all about what kind of government the Constitution gave us, how we got the Constitution. Congressman Madison will be um, sharing some inside stories generally not known to the public about the Constitution. And we'll talk about ratification, some of the things that happened in New York to give us the Bill of Rights. And of course, Mrs. Van R and I will be talking about society and clothes and just what's going on social wise in the town. You'll get all of those good stories as well. All of the diplomats and their wives and members of Congress and um, of course the first lady and uh, the vice president's wife the second lady so we'll be talking a lot about that as well so you, i hope you'll have a, a really great day joining us that day um ms mungvis says she's in pennsylvania i wonder what she's doing in pennsylvania normally she's in upstate new york in the hudson valley 
Um, I have not heard back about getting into the church, the actual church that we want to get into. Someone on YouTube has asked if we can get into Trinity Church. The church we actually want to enter for this tour is St. Paul's Chapel, which is the church where the inaugural service took place. I have contacted uh, Rector Jackson and asked him if we can have permission to enter that afternoon, and I have not heard back yet. The graveyard, though, is open, and we will be able to walk around to the entrance where President Washington entered the church and at that church we will have a great story for you about the um, rector the bishop who um, who uh, officiated over that um, at, over that service that day he has a wonderful life story um, Bishop Prevost and we'll be telling you all about him on the tour and Ms. Mumvis says she's at a dog event in Pennsylvania oh that's great so we have Manassas Virginia um, Oh, the McCabe's, of course, in Fredericksburg, Virginia, Philadelphia, Atlanta, Georgia, um, Tennessee. This is wonderful. Spokane, Washington, the other Washington. This is great. Thank you all for joining me tonight. Um, so if this was 1789, um, I'm sitting here in my private parlor and I'm not dressed for you tonight. As you can see, um, somewhat scandalously, I am wearing my stays. Let me pick up, pick up my hair. I am actually wearing my stays for you tonight. And these are my beautiful stays, which keep me in that lovely shape that I don't have in real life. Um, but stays are wonderful that they um, put you into a nice shape. And I have a little, you know, um, scarf here for modesty. But this is how ladies would appear lounging. They would have on their chemise and their stays. And I think we've all been friends long enough that maybe I could appear like this for you tonight. So this would be a lady just at home, maybe eating a meal, lounging, reading, talking to intimate friends, girlfriends, or husband or family member. So this is how we would be um, informally. Of course, we're not going to wear those all those petticoats and those overclothes at home because we only want to wear those when we need to because we don't want to soil them unnecessarily. They're so difficult to clean. Um, who else? Ms. Mumbis says, I look lovely. Thank you. Um, uh, oh, here we have someone who um, has her live stream tickets today watching from Southern California. Thank you so much. Uh, Ms. Kozlowski, thank you so much for joining us. It's going to be a great tour. Those of you on the live stream, though, we will be ending the tour in front of Francis Tavern Museum for you as we do not have permission to live stream within the museum. But you'll still see plenty of great things up until that point, I promise you. Uh, so if it was 1789, I might be lounging here on a Friday night, maybe finished working in my shop, although it is a little bit early for that. And some of the ladies here in New York City um, keep a later hour, so I might still be in my shop for a bit longer. But coming home, I might look like this, have a meal, have some things to say with Mr. Q and relax. Now in 1789, on April 8th, of course, we are preparing for Washington's arrival and the inauguration of the president and people from all over the country, all over the world have begun to arrive to see the president take his oath of office. So diplomats have begun arriving from throughout Europe and people have begun arriving from throughout America. The inns are beginning to fill up. I heard from Mrs. Van R, my sister, that she will, of course, be joining us and she will be arriving um, sometime in, I I think 10 days or so and staying here with me so she'll be um, walking with us that day and of course I did run into Congressman Madison recently who has assured us that he will be on our walk that day he'll be very busy you know he'll be escorting the president from his mansion to the federal hall in the morning and then of course he'll be taking part in the inauguration but he has promised that in the middle hours that he will join us on our walks so he'll be very busy that day and he'll be telling you all about what he'll be doing that day a very interesting day for him um let's see i'm from ohio thank you um how late would people stay out in the late 1700s well it's still a bit chilly now in the spring so probably until nightfall unless people are going to the theater of course or to a ball or a party or going to someone's home but when it gets warmer and it's light later um people might stay out until very late at night 10 or 11 o'clock some people might even have a late dinner at 10 o'clock if they're having a party and i hear that some of the best parties don't even start until 10 o'clock at night some of the places you might really want to be seen or see and be seen 
and of course inauguration week i am sure that mrs van r will know where all of those lesser known parties will be taking place um so it can be a very light late night fine ladies are not out early in the day it takes a long time to get dressed in the morning or for ladies toilet as it's called so those ladies may not even be ready or be seen in public till 11 o'clock or noon as they are going through their morning dressing ritual eating giving instructions to their servants and family members or whatever they're doing the working ladies though ladies of the hudson valley the ladies who work on farms of course they are out at dawn so they're up at dawn and they are working but the fine ladies of new york are not out before 11 or 12 o'clock so i don't open my shop until 11 a.m because um there just aren't very many ladies shopping in the morning and the bulk of the ladies will come in the afternoon and early evening to shop. Um, so it's a, quite of a, a, a later lifestyle um, here in the city. Then you see in the country, you know, where people are doing chores and really living from when the sun goes up to the sun goes down. We do see, have some late night activities here. So General Washington, messengers have been sent to, gen, to General, I should say now President Washington, to let him know that he has been elected president and they should be arriving in a day or two, I think at Mount Vernon, um, to tell him. And a messenger, I think probably has already reached Mr. Adams in Massachusetts to let him know that he will be serving as the vice president and both gentlemen will um, start on their way to New York. And all of the towns in between, at least for the president, um, have begun um, putting up um, arches and decorating their towns so that they can celebrate as the president comes through their town on the way to New York. So we're looking forward to this incredible event, April 30th, with lots of things leading up to the event that I'll be talking about as the days go by. So now I'm going to step out of Mrs. Q character for a moment and become my modern self, Karen Q. And I'll thank all of you for watching me. I've been doing this for two years now. I thank all of you for watching me and following me. I have had people recently on my tour, quite a few people who found my tour by watching Mrs. Q on YouTube or on Facebook. So that's really wonderful to know. One of the questions I get asked the most on my tours over the years is why do I do them? How did I come about caring so much about the American Revolution that I decided to study it and, and do these tours? Well, the first part of that story is that I had a prior career before this. Some of you know that I worked for many years on Wall Street in um, the field of equities trading. I wasn't a trader myself, but I worked in various support roles to that and eventually left that career due to stress. I had planned to take a year or two off and in that time pursue an interest that I had when I was um, a teenager and that was the American Revolution. And I read a couple of wonderful books about the American Revolution and uh, looked in all of the source notes and found that many of those original documents were here in New York City and I started looking at them. So those would be things like broadsides, pamphlets, correspondence, newspapers, all of these original documents. I got so fascinated, I got completely pulled into the time period. And I still didn't think I would do anything with it. But after about a year of that, one of my former Wall Street colleagues suggested I do a tour. So I started out in 2005 with my Revolutionary War tour that I think many of you have been on. And if you haven't been on it, come and take it. It's a great tour. I, I say so myself, it's a great tour. People really enjoy it. And after a couple of years of that, people started asking me if I would do a second tour that they could take. And for a number of years, I did a Civil War era tour of New York that I might bring back um, in the not too distant future. So I did that Civil War era tour. And then on the suggestion of someone who took my Revolutionary War tour, I started the Hamilton and Burr tour which of course, as you can guess, is highly successful. Um, so right now I'm doing the Revolutionary War Tour, the Hamilton and Burr Tour. And um, on Sundays, if you're interested in coming, when I have customers, I do my 300 years of architecture in one square mile tour. And of course, any tours I do are available upon request. So if you're coming to New York and you would like a Civil War tour, a Culper Spy tour, or any of the tours, let me know in advance and we'll work it out for you. I'm available to do um, any of them by request. Today, for instance, I did a tour based on a young adult novel called Chains. Some of you might know if you've had children in middle school, they may have read it. And it's a young adult story about two sisters who were slave girls who lived in New York during the Revolutionary War. It's by Lori Hulse Anderson. 
It's wonderfully accurate for the time period. And I do tours based on that book for New York City school groups. And I had a wonderful group today from the Brooklyn Independent School. Um, they were very enthusiastic. And besides doing the slaves tour, they wanted to look at some more things. So I brought them to some more landmarks that we could look at and talk about. So we had a great day. So I do tours like that as well. I do private tours and all sorts of other things. Now, why do I go out and do these tours? Someone asked me one day who came on a tour, she was my only customer, and she was shocked that I didn't cancel the tour because I will go out even for one person to tell the story of America. And this is the reason why. I'm going to change my background for you. Some of you may have seen this picture if you follow me on social media. And this is the reason why this is my father's family. My father is the little guy right here. <laughs> and this is his mother and his father, his older sister and his older brother. And uh, this picture was taken, I don't know, my dad couldn't remember how old he was here. So maybe he's about four or five. That would make the picture about 1925. As my father was the first um, the second born here in America, his brother born in 1919, and my father born in 1920. His sister was born in Italy, and um, it was their father, my grandfather, who left the family behind. Let me move around a little bit. Um, who left the family behind to come to America to find a better life for his wife and little girl. And um, of course, eventually the family are uh, reunited and they settled upstate in Binghamton, New York, where I was born and raised before I came here to attend NYU. So this is the reason I do my tour, because of the America that welcomed my mother's grant. My mother's parents were from Italy as well, but they came much earlier in the 1890s that welcomed all of my family to this country to build a better life. Now, when I was growing up, my father, and of course, Mrs. Q's father is a bit like this because I based him on my own father. My father did not want us to speak Italian at home, nor did he want to speak or talk about life in Italy. And interestingly, like many men of his time, he served in World War II, not far from the town in Italy where his parents came from. So he had a very interesting life, but none of that is anything he wanted to talk about. His, his attitude toward me was, your story is America, not Italy. It might be your ethnic heritage, but your heritage, your nation is America, and you should learn American history. And it wasn't until I was much, much older, in my 30s, that my father even began to talk to me about the reasons his family left and his experiences in the war and his thoughts about Italy. Um, so very interesting, my dad. Um, I didn't know my grandparents, they had both passed away by the time I was born. Uh, my, my father was 40 when I was born, so they had both uh, long departed at the time I was born. So when I started thinking about all of the great things my family achieved because these people, these People, peasants from Italy were allowed to come here to start a better life and to send their grandchildren to college. Um, all of the children of my generation did very well. We all went to college and did very well. I went to Wall Street and did very well. I thought someone should come out and talk about the greatness of the founding of this nation, that I at least owed it to America and to New York to tell this incredible story of how people have always been welcome here since the 1600s. You know, since the 1600s, we have had people living in this city from everywhere in the world who have always been welcome regardless of their religion or their race, always been welcomed here in New York. Um, so this is the reason I'll come out and do the tour even for one person because the story is so important to me to tell to everyone. And also you never know who that one person might be and how many people they might refer to you. I had a single customer once who then referred a number of millionaires to me who were her, her friends. So you never know who that one person might be and how important they might be to your future. So that, that is part of the reason I, Karen Q, study the American Revolution. The reason I tell the story as objectively as possible, because the story I learned when I was growing up during the Cold War um, was different from the story people are learning today which are both different from the story as it actually happened. So it's important to me to go by firsthand accounts, original source documents, to tell you the story as unbiased as I'm able, because I believe that you are all capable of figuring out 
who was telling the truth, who was a liar, who was an opportunist, who was an evil person, who was a good person. I think you can figure all of this out for yourself and that I don't need to be biased in my telling of the story. So I am also um, very convicted about that as well, telling as unbiased a story as possible and letting everyone who comes on my tour decide for themselves what they think of the events. Um, so I try not to taint it at all. If, if someone along the tour asks me my own personal view about something, I'll be happy to tell, but that's not generally the story that I tell on any of my tours. I try to be very objective. Um, I want everyone to know the true story of the founding, the good and the bad of it, because when we look back at it, it's an astounding time in human history that I know a lot of people would have hoped that many more things would have happened more quickly, but the foundation that you, the United States Constitution laid for the future is stunning when you think of it. Or as I spoke um, a couple of weeks ago, the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution together, the Declaration being the promise and the Constitution being a fulfillment of that promise of a government based on the will of the people. And of course, it wasn't perfect at first. Mrs. Q complains all the time that she can't own her, her property and her business, that under British law, she's not allowed to own anything, that Mr. Q owns everything she inherited from her father. If it was the Dutch era, Mrs. Q would have inherited everything herself, but under British law, ladies were not able to do so. And I don't think it was until maybe about 1840 that women were allowed to inherit and own their property. So it takes quite a long time. Of course, there's the issue of slavery, which takes a long time to be resolved as well. But those founding documents at least lay the foundation work for the things to come to make America a great nation. And so it's important to me to get out and tell that story every day if I can, or to tell it here on video if I can, to write about it, to answer your questions about it, and to, um, come to events dressed up if I can reach more people in costume as Mrs. Q. That's what I'll do. And that is how Mrs. Q came about. So in my quest to tell more and more people about the American Revolution, I dressed up one day um, to attend evacuation day at Federal Hall. And that was at the um, behest of my friend Kyle Jenks, who plays James Madison, um, told me I should dress up and I dressed up. I went to Federal Hall and crowds gathered around me all day and i realized that if you are dressed in the time period more people want to talk about you talk to you about who you are and when you lived and all of that sort of thing and i saw it as a wonderful new opportunity to reach people so i dressed up for that evacuation day i wasn't really sure what i was going to do with dressing up it was november winter came around and then of course you know the lockdowns came and what better thing to do than dress up as Mrs. Q and invite you into my parlor every Friday night, which I started doing. I think I began on Thursday nights, actually, and then switched to Friday nights. And I'm going to go back to my original background here. And what better way to share Mrs. Q than through video and live streaming? So Mrs. Q then became a very big character. And when I go places dressed as Mrs. Q, people always stop me and say to me, Mr. Q was coming in the door. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to be distracted. People always stop me and will say, oh my goodness, it's Mrs. Q. I watch you on YouTube or I watch you on Facebook. And it never fails. Whenever I go to an in-person event, people stop me because they know Mrs. Q. So I feel like Mrs. Q is one of the more, more successful things I've done to bring the American Revolution to people and to bring the ladies story of the American Revolution to people. And I'll just give you um, a hint here. Oh, Peg, Ms. Munvis is telling me that Zoom froze for her. People always have trouble on Zoom. That's why I have all of the multiple streams going from Facebook to YouTube to Zoom, just in case Zoom freezes. Um, I look good to myself on Zoom and to you on Facebook and YouTube, but who knows what might be going on on your end. Um, so I'll share with you that I have begun working on a tour of um, colonial ladies of New York. And it will talk about some of the Dutch ladies of the 17th century, some of the ladies of the pre-revolutionary war period. Of course, we'll talk about the spy 355 and we'll talk about some of the ladies post-revolutionary war, including of course, the magnificent 
Theodosia Burr and her life in New York. So we'd be talking about a lot of these interesting ladies. Some of them are very well known, um, educated ladies like Sarah Livingston Jay, and some of them have been completely forgotten like Anna Zenger, um, the printer's wife, who printed his newspaper for nine months while he sat in jail. So it'd be full of inspirational stories like that about New York City ladies that have been forgotten. You don't read about them in history books. And I only know of them from reading original source documents. So that tour will be coming up this summer as I you know, get it more together in my head. And I think I'll do a virtual version of that as well um, so that you can buy that virtually if you can't come to New York and see it, because I think that's going to be a rather important tour in the annals of remembering New York's role in the Revolutionary War, remembering the ladies. Of course, of course, Mrs. Murray will be on the tour. Um, um, Ms. Campo on Facebook commented, of course, Mrs. Murray will be on the tour. Um, we have from uh, from YouTube, Miss Kaler says, having a leader like Washington who said the last thing we needed was a king or a dictator, that we would have a president and that president would have limits. Of course, we'll be talking about that on our April 30th tour um, with Mr. Madison and of course, um, those of us who come in person in the long room where he began that journey to us having no king when he gave his first farewell speech there, a uh, very important spot. So you know, we'll be talking about that um what were the chances of all the right people coming together at the right time in history to build a new nation well almost impossible you know we seem to you know have quite a what do i want to say ambitious group here in america um ladies and gentlemen of various classes and backgrounds who came together mostly at the urging of gentlemen like thomas paine who urged everyone to come together because he said we had a once in a lifetime opportunity, he said, to remake the world anew, to form a new country here with everyone equal in the eyes of the law. Um, an incredible opportunity. And that is part of Thomas Paine's um, um, common sense that he published in 17 and 76. But we seem to have everyone from every class, didn't we? So we had the, the as we would call them, mechanics or leather shirts, the people, the gentlemen who worked the artisans, the dock workers, the farmers. We had those gentlemen who were willing to go out and join up as Sons of Liberty and make their case known. We had the merchants who were willing to boycott trade. We had the gentlemen of the intelligentsia, like Mr. J and Mr. Livingston, who were writing for all classes. The, the lower classes and the upper classes were writing and explaining why the king had violated Magna Carta and the common law and why we had the right to separate and urging the people to do that. So we had people of many, many backgrounds, many places uh, in society, many roles in keeping the colonies alive and prospering, all coming together for the Revolutionary War, a really incredible one-time event. And on the tour, we're going to talk about the different gentlemen who attended the Constitutional Convention and the way they did not agree really on anything and how um, Mr. Madison was able to bring them around and Mr. Hamilton to agreeing to the Constitution. It's a fascinating story. People were very, during Mrs. Q's time, just as divided as in our modern time, maybe even more so. Um, very divided, so it took very skilled people to bring everyone together, something I think we might not have today. Um, but we had people who were very skilled, like Mr. Madison, of um, maintaining his own neutrality, listening to all sides, and bringing people together in an agreement. Um, so they were a bit better at that at that time. But you might know the insults were quite personal at that time and cruel and nasty. And we'll be talking about some of those on our tour as well. You know, some of the insults that were still flying um, right up until Washington's inauguration. On Washington's inauguration day, everything stopped for one day. The back and forth, the insults, the politics, everything stopped for one day in American history for the inauguration of the first president. And then the next day it came right back. So there really was never any happy bipartisan, bipartisanship. It has always been adversarial. And I think Mr. Madison will even talk to you um, on the tour, talk to us 
about why they formed an adversarial government, a government where all the branches would be adversarial and what that was all about and what the intention of that was. And I'll be quizzing Mr. Madison on what some of the anti-federalists in New York um, felt were flaws in that constitution. So we'll be, um, you know, hitting Mr. Madison with some tough questions, which he can handle, I assure you. And then, as I said, Mrs. Van R and I will be speaking about um, the ladies and the role they played in the Constitution, um, in the Revolutionary War, some of the heroic things the ladies did, the Constitution, its ratification, and in Inauguration Day. Of course, all the ladies will be out in their beautiful clothes. And I just started, if you follow me on, oh, I didn't, I'll post it on Patriot Tours Facebook. I posted it on my personal Facebook and forgot to share it with all of you, but it's a picture of my beautiful white Tupioni satin that silk that I'm using for my billowing skirt and my cat sitting on it. I put it out, went to get, um, you know, um, a, a, a uh, tape measure. And when I went back, there was my cat parked right there like a little ship on that beautiful silk, claiming it for his own. But I have begun um, working on that big billowing skirt that I'll be wearing. It should be quite lovely. It's going to be a tiered skirt with some floral embroidery on it. Not done by me, of course. Um, <laughs> definitely not done by me. Um, so I've begun working on that outfit, which will be quite wonderful. Um, Washington, Mr. Cipolla, Washington hated party politics and knew it would destroy us. Of course he did. He warned against factionalism and party politics because of course they saw that destroy the british parliament right all of the problems that happened leading up to the revolutionary war in america are based in the party politics of the british parliament the whigs versus the tories two intractable parties and washington saw in his lifetime those parties that existed for their own gain two corrupt parties that existed only for their own power and financial gain. And he warned that factionalism and parties would lead to the same thing in America. So he's very much against party politics. Um, someone on YouTube. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you for thanking me. Oh, I'm so glad that you enjoy it. Um, if you come to New York, please take a tour with me. Um, Oh, don't worry about your age. The tour is very easy. I have had people in their 90s on my tour. It's very easy. It's all flat. There are benches everywhere. Don't worry about age. Don't anyone ever worry about age and taking my tours. They're flat. I stop where there are benches. And if you tell me you have any issues with your back, your legs, or anything, I'll be sure to make extra stops where we can just stop and chat and you can rest. So don't worry about your age at all. Um, Ms. Kaler thinks they should have duels now. I think maybe I agree with you <laughs> that maybe duels might not be a bad idea. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Not to the death, of course. Um, well, I don't know. <laughs> there might be something in that. I mean, just the, I mean, think of it, just the fact that these gentlemen would actually stand there at paces and they were very close together they weren't that far apart and aim guns at each other um just shows a type of hardiness that i don't think we see very much anymore a, a commitment to honor that really is stunning i'll tell you a quick story before i say good night and this is about a good friend of alexander hamilton's his name was robert troop um he was hamilton's roommate he was the roommate that um helped hamilton stop the sons of liberty when they were after the headmaster of king's college he also was a lifelong friend of aaron burrs and um you know theodosia used to call him um my fat friend colonel burr <laughs> colonel colonel troop um so anyway robert troop at one point in his life declined a challenge to a duel and um, people said he was a coward, that he was waving the white feather, showing the white feather, and um, ostracized him and his family from society. It was really terrible. And uh, Colonel Troop, as a result of that, um, developed, I, I'm not sure what we would call it today, one of you might know, a condition where he got um, blisters in his mouth continually, um, ulcers in his mouth and around his lips um, from the stress of the way he was treated in society for turning down a challenge to a duel. And that continued throughout his life and 
until the time dueling was outlawed in New York. And at that time, when there was no more pressure to duel, um, his condition cleared up later in his life. So this is part of what dueling is about. It's all about honor and courage, bravery. And um, if you turned down the challenge to a duel, you know, you really were ridiculed for it. And um, Colonel Troop really suffered as a result of turning down that duel. I, I forgot who challenged him and what the conditions were. Um, but, but he thought dueling was ridiculous, so he declined the duel, and it turned out to be much worse for him um, for many years and for his family um, until dueling was later outlawed and then still went to New Jersey for duels, right? So still dueling going on. Um, Mr. Facemeyer on Facebook says, it's the anniversary of Senator John Randolph. Oh, Foreman in Aaron Burr's trial and Henry Clay duel in present-day Arlington, Virginia. Oh, the Aaron Burr trial. Maybe one night I'll do a Mrs. Q live about Aaron Burr's treason trial and all of the politics behind that trial, because that trial is not what it appears to be on its face. And I haven't seen anyone really talk about it very much, but there was a lot of politics around his trial um, as a result of some other things that had happened previously that President Jefferson did not like. Um, so that is a fascinating trial. Uh, trial. So maybe I'll speak about, about that one week, um, Aaron Burr's treason trial. And, and I would not know all this if I wasn't reading all kinds of documents from the time period um, about these other instances and about Burr's trial and putting it all together. Um, Ms. Kaler says it's called scrofula, a medical condition um, that they, oh, the name they gave to this medical condition, and she's not sure what else to call it. So um, that was what uh, Colonel Troop suffered from for many years of his life, um, from the embarrassment of, of declining a duel. Um, so, you know, the gentleman really had a lot of um, pressure on them as to what it meant to be um, a gentleman, and ladies as well, you know, you know ladies as well had quite um, a high standard um, that they had to conform to in order to be known as a lady. And on the April 30th tour, I'm going to tell a story about a lady who shocked Mrs. Van R and I um, appearing at Mrs. J's banquet one afternoon. And I'll tell you, we'll tell you all about who that lady was and what she did to um, shock everyone there. And um, I'm sure Mrs. Van R will have some very good, you know, eye rolling <laughs> for that. Um, how much are the tickets? Um, well, let me type where you can get the tickets in here. Um, they're at Patriot Tours. Can I don't have my glasses or contact lenses on. Let me see if I got that right. PatriotToursNYC.com. And they are in person. They're $40, and the live stream is $25. And if you come in person, you will also get the link to the live stream if you want to watch it again in the future. So you'll just get that as well. Um, so I hope you'll come out and support my continuing effort to keep the story of America's founding alive, as well as Kyle Jenks, who, if you have not seen him, is just incredible as James Madison. I am not an actress. I'm a historian and a good storyteller who dresses up. Kyle is a wonderful actor. And when we walk around on Saturday, April 30th, he will be James Madison. I will fall out of character a few times along the tour route, but Kyle will not. And the $40 is worth it just to be able to spend an afternoon with Kyle as James Madison interact with him, speak to him. You'll have plenty of time to speak to him. And it will just be an experience unlike anything you can imagine if you have never met him before. And on the live stream, your questions will be answered as well. So if you're not coming to New York, get the live stream and um, Mr. Madison will get your questions on the live stream as well. I, I'm sure you'll find it well worth the price um, for what you'll be getting that day. Something truly unique, unlike anything anyone else is doing here in the city. I think you'll really enjoy it. Um, oh, Mrs. Healy is here on Facebook. Mrs. Healy, we're looking forward to seeing you as well. Um, she says, I found my calling. I did, you know, I think I might've said once before that I was so 
so much kind of an introverted intellectual when I was growing up that I never even put on a Halloween costume because I was so fearful of anyone laughing at me. And look at me now. I, I would rather dress like this. I put an outfit on social media, a French outfit with a wonderful collage. It's called a huge brown bonnet. And the, the woman is wearing a beautiful brown shawl that matches in a lovely pink dress. And oh, I would just love to dress like that every day if only I could. So I have found my place, strangely enough, and never thought I would be performing in front of a camera ever in costume. But you know, when doors open for you, I encourage all of you to take them no matter how old you are. If a mysterious door opens, walk through it because like me, you never know where it will lead you. You never know what kind of great experiences you'll have as a result. You know, life still goes on whatever age you are. So take those opportunities. Um, here we have, um, um, I'm not sure if it's a Ms. or a Mr. Tucker from Atlanta because I said I don't have my glasses on so I can't see your picture. Um, who says they're in Atlanta, but planning to come to do my tour, hopefully this summer, please, I hope you will. Um, so much more fun than Wall Street. It is more fun than Wall Street. And there is another tour coming up this summer that I am going to be doing with Tripod, TriSpy Tours. My friend Margo out in Setauket, who runs TriSpy Tours, I, as Karen Q for Patriot Tours, will be joining her this summer and we'll be doing a full Culper Spy Ring tour explaining the entire Spy Ring, Margot covering the Setauket end and me covering the New York City end. That will be not to be missed and that will be taking place out in Setauket, New York. I will have much more information about that as we firm up the date and more about it. And I hope to see many of you in Setauket for this extraordinary tour that we'll be doing. So I think, oh, 741. I try to keep these to half an hour, so we're at 41 minutes. So thank you all so much for joining me. Um, I will be back next week. I'm going to start sewing this weekend. So I will be posting sewing pictures and videos on YouTube so you can see my inaugural outfit come together. I've been using those French fashion plates, so I am, go am going to try to dress French that day. <laughs> we'll see how that comes out. <laughs> so hopefully it's going to be beautiful, I hope, but we'll see. Um, but I'll um, share you in on the making of the outfit because it should be very interesting. It's going to require some techniques I've never used before. Um, let's see. Oh, that's so great. Um, Gracie Bell on YouTube says there are people pointing out things on TikTok and, and, um, and Gracie Bell says, yeah, I know I learned it from Mrs. Q. Thank you. I think that's great. People have suggested I go to TikTok. I wonder what you think about that. Um, will I ever change the color of my wig? Well, you know, I do have my darker wig from when I was younger with just a few gray hairs. And I do have one that's all gray with a little blue in it. Um, and I have this one. This one actually matches my real hair color. So I like it because some of this, some of these curls you're seeing sticking out are my hair and not the wig. So I really like this one. Plus it's light, it's all synthetic and it's light. Doesn't make my head as hot. Um, so thank you all again for coming. I'll see you next Friday. If you have any questions for me about the tour, um, any questions you have before you might wanna buy tickets, please get in touch. I'm happy to answer the questions and um, I will um, be seeing you next week. And uh, hopefully we'll maybe have Mr. Madison along one of these evenings. We'll see if he can free up his schedule for us. So thank you all very much. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next week. Have a wonderful, safe, and healthy week, and I'll see you again. Someone's asking about dates on Facebook. The tour I'm talking about is April 30th. That's the inauguration tour, and I do not have the date yet for the Culper Spiring Tour, but I'll let you know. It's sometime in August. Um, so thank you all so very much.